what you're listening to. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Snowman in the Morning podcast. Did you not get the memo? Insanity ensues. Can't wait. Again, thank you to the EP of all EPs, our executive producer, Mr. Cole Johnson, for directing me to some weapons. Let's go. And just Dear, so y'all know, this ain't me. No, 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 no. Let me, let me explain this. Let me explain this. Oh, go, because go, go. every time I bring out these criticisms, I'm always being called the hater. I'm not a true Cowboys fan because I don't ride with the team. Now y'all about to hear it from someone who really don't like the Cowboys. Y'all okay. hear from so man. Okay. Um, gather around, gather around, gather around, gather around the campfire. I got the hot dogs and marshmallows. You just bring the propane. Oh, it's already hooked up. Okay. Bring more. Cool. Hang on a second. I'll send a text. Okay. Now, I'm going to include a few teams in this. A few. Cowboys, Steelers, Yankees, Lakers, a couple of others. Why am I including all these people on this particular hot seat? Because I'm sick and tired of the hype with no proof behind it. The Cowboys suck. Okay? Let me say it again. The Cowboys suck, and they have sucked since 19... 19- 93. Why am I bringing up 1993? Because that was their last true championship. I don't count the one where they had got in Super Bowl 30 when Barry Switzer, who dropped to his knees in front of Gerald, got Jimmy Johnson fired. And basically took over a team that Jimmy Johnson put together, which led to a 35-year feud. Mm -hmm. And you thought that putting Jimmy Johnson in the ring of honor after they put him in the Hall of Fame would solve the problem? No. You know what you needed to do, Gerald? Stay out of the way. Because the Cowboys were on their way to truly being the team of the 90s. Mm -hmm. They were truly on their way to being a team of the 90s. And this is coming from a long-time 49er fan. I've been a 49er since 1981. But I respect the Cowboys of Tom Landry, and I respect the hell out of the Cowboys of Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson knew what needed to be done. He did it at Miami. Tom Landry knew what needed to be done. He was coming to the end of his time, and and he knew it. But when that snake oil salesman named Gerald Jones bought the team, he knew that he was getting rid of Landry. Now, it turned out to be a good move because Landry wound up riding off into the sunset. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Nightfall, just like John Gruden following Tony Dungy. Dungy got screwed out of a Super Bowl, but it was made up to him in 2006. That's a later conversation. Mm-hmm. I don't put the 1995 Super Bowl, which would be Super Bowl 30, if I remember correctly, in the pantheon of championships for the Cowboys because Barry Switzer dropped to his knees, as I said, in front of Gerald, and then Gerald acted. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now, let me explain why I don't put that championship along with the others. Well, shoot, I just explained it. Gary Switzer was riding the coattails of Jimmy Johnson, which should tell you how bad of an NFL coach Barry Switzer was. Mm -hmm. He should have stayed at Oklahoma, and Gerald needs to stay his ass out of football affairs. But he can't help himself. You can't. Because he knew that he was not going to get the credit for the Jimmy Johnson era. Mm -hmm. Uh, Quite frankly, Gerald needs to take a trip to Chicago and Foxborough, grab a couple of pinheads. 
and go down to Florida and, and I'll tell you massage. I'll tell you the one game, and I think Nightfall will agree with me, Arku will agree with me, and every rational cowboy fan will agree with me when I tell you the one game that ruined the Cowboys dynasty. Mm-hmm. The date was January 15th, 1995. The scene of the crime, Candlestick Park, San Francisco, California. Mm-hmm. Occasion, NFC Championship. Third consecutive NFC Championship between the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. All the Cowboys had to do was go back to their old ways, march into San Francisco, and beat them. That's all. But you know what happened? Three times the Cowboys coughed up the football in the first quarter. And three times the Niners took advantage and turned them into touchdowns. And the play that started the avalanche of misery for the Cowboys that started on January 15th, 1995, and continues to this day was the 44-yard interception return by Eric Davis. He was looking for Jay Novacek out in the flat, and Eric Davis flattened him. Mm -hmm. That started it, and it continues to this day. Through every quarterback, save Troy Aikman, that the Cowboys have had. I mean, hell, once upon a time, Quincy Carter was called upon to be the Cowboys quarterback. Hell, once upon a time, Drew Bledsoe was called to be a Cowboys quarterback. Come on here. I'll give you another significant... Hi, Pumpkin. I'll give you another significant day in the downfall of the Cowboys empire. uh, Downfall of the Cowboys dynasty. I want to go back to 2000. Sunday Night Football featuring... The New York football giants. All the Cowboys had to do was hold serve at home. You hold serve at home in Texas Stadium. You prevent the Giants from winning the division. You prevent the Giants from having home field advantage throughout the playoffs, which they they would get the following week. And you have a little bit of respect. Instead, the Cowboys choked. I'm not even going to be nice and say surrendered. The Cowboys choked a 13-0 lead and lost the game 17-13. to That was during the rise of Tiki Barber and company. Now, many a cowboy, many a member of the Moronic Republic, I have to be specific here, will call me a hater because of all this I'm saying about the cowboys, saying you don't know your history. Oh, no. I can tell you that those games were featured in the downfall of the cowboy imp- uh, of the cowboy dynasty. I can tell you that many others beyond that, including not one, but two trips to Carolina. Two trips to Carolina. And all y'all did in those two trips to Carolina, one, you didn't even score 20 points in either game. And secondly, you walked back to Dallas with a great big fat ass... Bonus game. Nightfall, I'll answer your question. What year was that Jake Plummer and the Cowboys dropped the Cowboys from the playoffs? The year was 1998. Jake Plummer and the St. Louis slash Arizona Cardinals went into Dallas and socked them in the mouth. (laughs) All I'm doing 
is presenting the facts. Lord knows I have many an opinion. Okay? But when you look at the when you look at the straight up facts, the Cowboys have not been the Cowboys since 1993, and they nearly choked that year away. Thanksgiving Day 1993 anyone? Huh? Oh, y'all don't remember 1990. Y'all don't remember Thanksgiving 1993. Well, let me throw a name at you. Does the name Leon Let mean anything to y'all? That started it. That truly, truly started it. And as you heard Shane say in the last segment, and while I'm roasting the Cowboys here, the Cowboys have now had a 200-yard rusher since Halloween 1993. His name, Emmett Smith. And they've had plenty of opportunities for that to happen. You had Mary, you had Marion Barber, for God's sakes. Okay. You've had many a running back go through that uh go through that facility. You you had um DeMarco Murray, who led the league in rushing once upon a time. Okay? I can point out all the games that I can, and everyone led to the downfall. But the one act that Gerald will never, ever, ever be forgiven by true Cowboy fans was firing Jimmy Johnson. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I'll say it again. The one mistake that Gerald did, and his team has not been the same since, he fired Jimmy Johnson, which leads to Gerald today. Since that day in 1993, the Cowboys have never been the same. You bring in Barry Switzer to coach an all-star team, and he did a horrible job at that. They looked into Super Bowl 30. They lucked into it. Why? Because the Green Bay Packers took out San Francisco at Candlestick Park. Frisco was the number two seed. And I guarantee you, had the Cowboys seen San Francisco that day in January of 1996, we wouldn't be talking about the Cowboys being five-time champs. Because about that time, before Brett Favre and company showed up and forced Steve Young to throw the ball 65 times, the Niners were getting their act together. And it seems like they always, they meeting the 49ers, always seem to get their act together when it counts. And I especially bring the rivalry, which ain't been much of one, with the Cowboys to light with what happened Sunday night at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. For you see, Moronic Republic of Cowboy Nation, the Niners had more injuries than the Cowboys. The Cowboys were healthy in all of the key positions, or so we thought. But then and then they took they led 10 to 6 at the half. What's a mistake that the Cowboys made on Sunday night? They let San Francisco get a field goal before half and the Niners received the ball to start the second half. Why are you yelling at me, Pumpkin? Come here. I think Pumpkin wants a part of this, too. They let San Francisco get a field goal before the half and the third quarter, to start the third quarter, a 43-yard completion to George the Animal Kittle. That started the avalanche. That started the avalanche. Oh, and it's so bad. It's so bad that 
The Cowboys signed a retread Ezekiel Elliott, and he did nothing. Meanwhile, the Niners are leading on their third running back in their system, a rookie by the name of Isaac Garendo, who ran a 4-3 at Louisville. I hope I got that right, honey. And he burned him. 14 carries for 85 yards. And a stat that Dog brought up yesterday. The Cowboys, as a committee, rushed for 56 yards. Now, how many rushing yards Brock Purdy had uh, Sunday night? 56 by himself. And to borrow from my homie, the playmaker, Brock Purdy by himself beat the Cowboys. That's for you, playmaker, and I hope you're well. So the Cowboys in many ways are like the Bears. They can't draft for need. They can't draft. They draft more for want than need. They can't fix the problems they have on their offensive line. They don't want to fix the problems on their offensive line. And they want to lean on a quarterback who is below mediocre. Yeah, I said it. They want to lean on a quarterback who's below mediocre. And Dakota Rain Prescott, you are below mediocre. Your last best year was at Mississippi State. Oh, and uh, Arku says we need to have, they needed to draft a running back in the, in the draft. You had Deuce Vaughn. You don't use him. Deuce has a V8, and they just don't know how to use it. You want to go out, Pumpkin? Quite simply stating, the Cowboys, them boys be cooked. And have been cooked since January 15th. 1995. Here's the thing. The culture needs to change in Dallas. It say never will again. with Gerald at the head of the helm. Say, say that again, Victor. The culture Please. needs to change in Dallas. You want to know how to, fix, how to fix everything, Dallas? Change the culture. Stop resting in your laurels. It's not 1995 anymore. Say that for those in the cheap seats of the old, old Texas stadium. You beat me too. Which is currently sitting as a equipment yard in Irving, Texas. It is not 1995 anymore. We are two. We are three months away. Well, two months away from it being 2025. Yes. Say, say that a little bit louder for the people in the nosebleeds of Arrowhead Stadium. <laughs> it is An old candlestick pock. Oh, you beat me to it. Thank you. Thank you, dog. Thank you. I'll go as far as the old as the old Comiskey Park. Let's get on oh, that. A place, a place that has my heart. It is not 1995 anymore. It is we are two months away from 2025, and we are still holding on to the same idiotic, moronic principles that have basically hampered us from getting a championship since 1995. And I don't even count the 1995 championship because that should have been Jimmy Johnson's third. And what kills me and you're right the thing is that this is all on Gerald. Mm -hmm. just like the bears wolves are all on virginia because we could talk about eber fools and pennywise and caleb williams and dak prescott all we want yep what do either of those people either of those quarterbacks have to work with granted mm -hmm. caleb williams got deandre swift but with eber fools in the way we don't know how that's going to play out, but that's just at the top. The thing is, is that both Virginia, Gerald, and Kraft, because you ain't getting uh, out of this one either. Kraft. I was about to say, you might want to. And you soccer. throw Jeannie Buss in the conversation. And good. you throw Jeannie Buss in the conversation. And you throw Brian Cashman in the conversation. I, I was about to say, you may want to take a trip to old Sullivan Stadium here in New England. Oh, that gives me an idea. Finish, Victor. You say all those individuals, all they want are yes men. 
They only want yes men who don't want to take the credit for actually putting a competent team together. Like Jimmy Johnson they, did, like Bill Walsh did, like Mike exactly, Dicker did. Exactly. Because in the end, they needed to be about them. And until that culture changes, nothing changes. W- would you say that again, please? I-, I-, I need to hear you say that. I need, I must hear you say that again. Until that culture changes, until you stop hiring these yes men and asking people who know the game of football, X's and O's. And not X's and O bleep. Until you change that culture, nothing is changing. You know, I I just want... I, I I tried my best to understand. I did. I tried my best to understand why they got rid of Jimmy Johnson. I couldn't believe it because well, Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson was to the 49ers what Bill Walsh was to the Cowboys. It, it's one word. Insanity. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's also... Are you, do you, unless some miracle happens, do you ever think, do you think that Jared Gerald Jones is going to get that, that Gatorade bath? No. No. There's no way no. he's going to be down on the field to get that suit dirtied up with Gatorade. Are you crazy? He but doesn't want to get the suit dirtied up. No, he does. He wants, he wants the adulation of it. Maybe not the actual, you know. He's not, yeah, he, he's not putting he in wants, the work for it. He wants the adulation of it. He wants he wants that hype. He wants the hyperbole. Mm-hmm. He wants the pop and circumstance. He wants the flowers without doing the work. Exactly. And that has been the culture of the Dallas Cowboys. And more so, the Moronic Republic. And the reason why this, uh, this irks me so doggone bad is because I'm the one taking the beating. Yes. Unfairly, unfairly, I'm the one taking the that, beating. That, from that's the, that's the crazy thing about it is we, we're actually the sensible fans, mm-hmm. and we're the ones getting our asses kicked, right? I mean, I'm not a part of the new. I'm not a part of the Nimrod New England Society. Lord knows, I'm getting mine with the with the 49ers so, and the Warriors. Right. So when I so when I get beat down, and I'm getting beat down from all sides, I'm getting beat down from the Mark Public and every other Cowboy fans hater. Because when they look at me, they see you. When they look at me, they see the Monarch Republic. When they look at me, they see the same. We go in the Super Bowl. We go make it Super Bowl. This our year. Yeah, Bo told this lie. And I will make it clear, I am not a part of the Knucklehead Society of Kansas City. Because this has been yet another (laughs) Beating a Dead Horse presentation. And I'm sick of it. Yeah. I'm sick of it. I know Victor's sick of it. I'm sick and Victor's tired. Of it. Been, Victor's sick and tired. All cowboy fans, true cowboy fans. And Jerry wouldn't let Parcells pick his guy for his team to work. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Jets did the same thing to Bill Parcells. And in a couple of ways, so did the Patriots. I was about to say, uh, yeah, we did the same thing. What are we talking about here? Every other team besides the New York Giants handcuff Bill Parcells in some way, shape, form. Or fashion. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the biggest problem with these old school owners. And why? Because, yes, Dak, it is you. (laughs) It has always been you. It always will be you. Forever and ever. And the church said loudly. Amen. 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 Thank you, snowman. Amen. Thank you. Now Brian. get up. Hey.
Hey everybody, Snowman here. Looking for the best way to experience live events? Well, SeatGeek has you covered. With just a few taps on your phone, you can find the best seats for concerts, sports, theater, and more. Don't miss out on unforgettable moments. Download the SeatGeek app today and get ready for an experience like no other. Each ticket is vetted for authenticity and ranked on a 1 to 10 scale. And right now, if you sign up and use the code SNOWMAN, you will get 20 bucks off of your first purchase. That's only through the power of SeatGeek, where fans can fan. Yes, Robert Kraft, it is you. It has always been you. It will forever be you and your asinine moves forever and ever. And the church rose and said as one. Amen. Amen. I added a little uh, flash to it. And now I will do something for Shane. Hmm? Hey, Robert Kraft, have a seat. Or yours, dog. Sick him. The house of New England has opened up, and our savior is here. No, it's not. It's not Robert Kraft. No, it's not. Oh dear God! <laughs> because Robert Kraft has been proven to be the devil in this one, <laughs> because all of the idiotic moves the last few years have proven to be the downfall of the Patriots. First off, you signed Jacoby Brissett <laughs> to a long-term deal. <laughs> Why in the blue hell did you do that Jacoby. when the answer to all of our problems was Nathan the freaking rock? <laughs> uh huh. And then you go and do a stupid thing like stupid. trading our best pass rushing linebacker. In Josh Uche for a sixth round draft pick. Not even a player. Just a sixth round draft pick. Right, get off of my screen. We don't need to smile. <laughs> right now, this is a house of mourning. Because everybody down at O'Flaherty's is wondering what the hell is going on up there. Nobody is going to mourn the Patriots. <laughs> All of the diehard New England fans who dealt with the Drew freaking Bledsoe and Bill Parcells floundering their way in through things until Bill Belichick saved the day with Tom freaking Brady. Right now we are mourning because this is basically our season in a nutshell. We lost Drake May to a concussion for two weeks. At least because of a blown call by the refs. By the way, this proves the refs are no longer on New England side. Nor have they ever been in the first place, but that's always been debatable. <laughs> but Robert Kraft, you numb nut. <laughs> <laughs> you need to do yourself a favor and make a call to Jodrall. What you need to do is set up a road trip. Go to Chicago and pick up that witch. That's threatening the Chicago Bears. <laughs> and go down to Florida and retire, you monkey. Because <laughs> <laughs> right now, all you're good for. You ain't even good for the looks on TV because everyone's looking at you like, why are you still here? <laughs> you all know it's also your son is trying to take over the team, and he's got more brains than you do. Uh huh. So, sir. Before I run out of propane, because we've already used the majority of it on Dallas fans. <laughs> <laughs> and Hank won't be here until tomorrow to refill the tank. Oh, I'll call in some reinforcements. Oh, don't worry. He'll be here tomorrow to make sure we got a bigger tank, too. I All made right. sure of it. I'll make sure of it, too. But for God's sake, Mr. Kraft, for the love of the car that around my neck, sir, do us a favor and get the out of Foxborough because you're no longer running New England. We don't want you here. 
Now do me a favor before we end up losing the losing all the gas in the tank. Because I gotta grill up some burgers. Get up and get gone. <laughs> I'm done with you. Absolutely beautiful. Hey everybody, Snowman here. Looking for the best way to experience live events? Well, SeatGeek has you covered. With just a few taps on your phone, you can find the best seats for concerts, sports, theater, and more. Don't miss out on unforgettable moments. Download the SeatGeek app today and get ready for an experience like no other. Each ticket is vetted for authenticity and ranked on a 1 to 10 scale. And right now, if you sign up and use the code SNOWMAN, you will get 20 bucks off of your first purchase. That's only through the power of SeatGeek, where fans can fan. Now, oh. before we bring on Mike Drop Moran, <laughs> she gave me a mic drop before anything even happened. Oh, Let me boy. read to you what she sent me. The first, the, the first part there is because um, she sends me the subjects that uh, she wants to talk about during the show. Okay, and we try to get to all of them. And God love you, Allison. She sends me a lot of good stuff, mm -hmm. but I need to read this first line. Okay. She says, "Hi, Brian. Subjects for the show include." Here's the mic drop. The WNBA's changing coaches like women change clothes. I mean, not wrong. No, uh, no she's not wrong. She's not wrong because two coaches have bitten the dust. But we've already had our mic drop. I have a feeling there's more. Here's Allison. Good morning, my dear. How are you today? Good morning, Brian. I am great. How about you? <laughs> drop Moran. How are you? See, Mike see, Drop Moran at your service. <laughs> that's a drop. That's a, that's a drop. <laughs> Mike Drop well, Moran. The last 15 minutes have been just shorts in its own right. Sure, yes. Okay. I'm going to start in reverse. Because there's a new three-on-three -three basketball league, mm -hmm. uh, Unrivaled, I think it's the name. That and is it's the name. Full of mm -hmm. current WNBA players. It's scheduled to begin in January. Right. However, there's a name that they want in their league so badly. Mm -hmm. I think y'all know who that name is. It's the same young lady that they beat to hell for 40 games. And she took Indiana to the playoffs. Yep. Now, we'll get to the firing of Christy Sides in just a moment. But Unrivaled will not survive one winter, Allison, if they don't lure Caitlin Clark. And boy, are they trying. You're right. <laughs> I will say, this is um, a three-by-three three league, 3x3, three three, not sure what they're calling it this week, but the, the thing about it is that it's a league that was founded by players, was founded by Nafisa Collier mm -hmm. and Brianna Stewart. And it's big money. They got big investors in the league. They can actually afford to pay... Mm -hmm our uh our friends some big money mm -hmm. and they are talking about and i quote this a messy like deal and if you don't know who i'm talking about it's lionel messi mm -hmm. who was paid oogles of billions of dollars no, not really oogles yeah. of billions, but the, oh, he no. was paid a a hell of a lot of money to come to the yeah. mls and yeah. The thing is that this league is, A, going to keep U.S. players in the U.S. They've always had to go to Europe. Mm 
Yep. They've always had to go overseas to a get money mm -hmm. to play the game that they love and B make sure that they can afford their lifestyles. Right. Um, the problem is that they have had the, and when I say they, I mean the, in the uh, players in the league have never had a day off in right. all the years they played basketball. Now, mm -hmm. this league at least keeps them in the United States. Um, it's also exciting because 3x3 uh, basketball has been a, 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 it's one of the chief growing sports in the nation. Mm -hmm. And I mean, starting off on the streets and 3x3, three, 3x3 three three, three three basketball started, um, you know, in, uh, in uh, schoolyards and basketball courts in and and now it's getting the final recognition that they need there's going to be six teams and i don't know who comes up with these names i don't know okay uh oh oh no <laughs> six teams okay. they're called the laces the mist the phantom the lunar owls the rose and the vinyl. Um, what? I, the vinyl. The lunar. The I, lunar owls. The lunar owls. Okay. What all bloody right. drunk I mean, person came up with this all, one? All I, go. I, I got a. I, I must ask. I, I must. I must ask. And I'm going to get an assist here. Chris, please pose the question. What in the all types of blue hell? It's a lunar owl. That sounds like a Dungeons and Dragons. The lunar owls. The lunar owls. Okay, my that wife is... couldn't even come up with a name like that, and my wife has come up with some gems. Okay, That's in the six you... years that Jody and I have been together, she's come up with some gems for mm -hmm. bad jokes to keep me in good spirits while I was in the hospital. And you know, mm -hmm. y'all will see y'all will see Jody post some of those post some of those jokes uh, for me. If Jody couldn't come up with that one, you oh, look, you can't make this up. A you lunar owl, a lunar owl is something you'd see in like Magic the Gathering. Here, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, Sam. Hey, I'm, man, just saying. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's it's just simply the way that these leagues are founded um mm -hmm. hopefully i'm i'm going to say that there's a method behind the madness i do not know the method behind the madness i do know that it's that uh we must respect these names for now just as we respected all the names that have come before in every city you know i don't understand it but let's say this um the houston comets back when in the wnba had a reason the because of the rockets because yeah. of the when yeah, the, the WNBA was formed in 1997. Every yeah. name that was there was based yeah. off of their big of their big brother team. And had it, had a, it also had a tie to Houston as yep. well because of NASA. Yep. And so I get mm -hmm. all that. I yep. get all that. I mean, hell, the home of the Astrodome. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. And so you, you it's all the, you got the New York Liberty, who are the reigning yeah. champions right now. You know, yes. Lady Liberty in New York. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I still won't understand why they didn't play at MSG, but who cares? They got their they got their first title. The Timberwolves the won, Center. Yep, the Timberwolves. Better than Brooklyn yeah. College. Okay, yeah. okay. Better than yep. Brooklyn College. Better than Brooklyn maybe, College. Maybe next year they'll get MSG. Donald Trump got it. Why I not would, them? So, I would love to whoa. see the whoa. Liberty back at MSG because they were selling the place out. Yeah. They were selling. They were selling the place out. What? Well, those of you don't that uh, don't know the don't know the history. I followed the WNBA since its inception in 1997 when they first mm -hmm. launched. They were averaging, and I believe this figure to be correct, 19,591 at every game 
Mm-hmm. At MSG, doesn't matter how the team performed. It's the fact that the 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 New Yorkers, especially the especially the women, loved the New York Liberty, and they mm-hmm. love them now. And they went nuts when they came all the way back and won that series. Okay, yeah. but but Chris, do it again. What in the all types of blue hell? It's a lunar owl. <laughs> Someone, uh, look, Ali just gave us another mic drop moment, and I'll repeat what she just said. There's a method to the madness. I don't know what the hell it is. Yeah. I don't, know the, I don't want to know what the hell it is. I know there's a method to it. <laughs> there is. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. I and don't. we will be. Now, the rumor about Caitlin Clark is that they are trying to get her with a million dollar a salary. Million dollar. Yep. Yes. And so we'll see. Um, I can't. I, I knew that she needed a rest after the season. Yes. However, I mean, she's she's had two months to rest. Come on. Uh, you know, she's young. She's 22. She's got to get back out there. So um, God knows which team is going to be able to sign her. But, but you know, I'm we'll see. Bet, I, I'm willing like, to bet this offer didn't come from the league. This offer came from their network, which is TNT. Yeah, TNT yeah. is trying to carry the to carry the games, which means old snowman may be lighting up the headset here in studio. Yeah. But I will may I will venture a guess, <clears throat> even with everything, <clears throat> beg your pardon, even with everything that Caitlin Clark has been through, physically, emotionally, mentally, uh, to say that she thrived in her rookie season in the NBA would be an understatement. I mean, you may as well say unanimous rookie of the year. All yeah. right. She brought yeah. her team to the she brought her team to the playoffs. Unfortunately, they had to face the best defensive team in the Connecticut Sun in the in the first round. And the Sun did what they were supposed to do against a young team. Um, that offer did not come from the league. I guarantee to you, it did not come from the league. TNT is trying to get into Caitlin Clark's ear, and mm-hmm. they're trying to get eyes on their league via TNT. Because in a year's time, they're losing NBA coverage. Yes. So how, So this is a backdoor move in my yeah. eye. And ESPN them. has got the, yep. the WNBA. So, you mm-hmm. know, that's, that's off limits at the moment. Although, God knows, um, I'm excited about this whole turn of events. And yeah. I think... It just really bodes well for women's basketball altogether. And it'll be something to watch while the snow flies. And yep. it'll um, keep us busy. Yes. I know that much. It'll keep us busy until next WNBA season. You Speaking and I will keep day. talking. That's oh, yeah. for sure. I and should mention another. Mm-hmm. Just another little name change that is happening. Uh uh, regarding the Chicago Red Stars, who are playing their final regular season game, mm-hmm. let them be known. Ju- the, I, I think this was a completely unnecessary change. I'm not. The, I'm not the management, but the Chicago Red Stars, 15 year veterans of the Chicago professional women's soccer team, is now going to be known as the Chicago Stars. Hmm. And I'm going. Why? What? <laughs> the Chicago Stars. And the Chicago Stars, the reason I think for this change is number one, you have Laura Ricketts as owner. She's also, uh, she and the Ricketts family, of course, also own the Cubs. That's why they had their big. Um, moment at Wrigley Field this year, turning yep. the, um, turning this um, uh, team fun. in, you know, and the uh, all of the nice baseball field into a soccer field. And hey, they made a uh, a record thirty five thousand people in the stands for women's soccer. Not too shabby. Not too um, shabby at all. Part of the Part of the reason for that uh, that name change is because of all the controversy surrounding their former coach, Rory Dames, who was fired, as well 
as the owner, the then owner, Arnim Whistler, who mm. had um, uh, covered up a lot of emotional abuse that the team was going through at the hands of Rory Dames. And he, he was I'm, I interviewed him a thousand times. He was tough on the players. Mm -hmm. um, and I understood why. However, um, this name change did two things wrong. And I talked with my good friend, Peter Wilt, who actually founded the Red Stars. Mm -hmm. And I've been friends for 15 years. Um, there's an understanding in this, in this world that um, they wanted to distance themselves from, from the Red Stars who had all this controversy. Um, and how, however, they also wanted an, an identity of their own. This is a new ownership group. Yeah. It's, it signaled a new era. What Peter said was that they executed it very, very poorly mm. because if you'll remember back 15 years ago, Brian, they had a contest to name the Red Stars when it first yes. came to town. Yes. And this, I, I got to tell you, the logo is, is bland. You'll be able to see the merchandise at Seek De Geek Stadium on November 3rd when they take on the, um, the Kansas City Current, the current leader of the NWSL. Mm -hmm. um, they will have this. It's a single star, which Laura Ricketts says is all about the player, the players in the league. They're the stars. Chicago needs to be the star. Um, what? And it. They. Peter says, and rightly so, that they could have avoided all of this backlash mm -hmm. if. Uh, from the fans. It's like, what the hell did we need a name change for? And exactly. who, yeah, what it's did like we came out of the blue. For? We it's like it just came out of the blue. It, 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 it has, it, I really feel it's come out of the blue because every time Allison's been on, it's re it's Red Stars. That's how I will always know, that's how I will always know them oh. as. Uh, Seattle Supersonics, anyone? And y'all yeah. know how I feel about the NBA and what they did to the Seattle Supersonics. Yeah, Supersonics. Exactly. Oh, exactly. It's sad. It, now, and, to the yeah. main point. Uh oh. Yeah. Christy Sides got the boot uh -oh. from yes. Indiana Fever. Are we switching to the or do we have enough propane to tank? Oh, like we got, oh, no, we just have, we, we got yeah, plenty. Listen, uh, we, we, got, brought, we brought up what was left over from the church. And we, got, we, we got plenty. Too. So go I, ahead, had a, I had a friend pose a question to me, and I want to pose it to Allie, and I want to pose it to the panel. My friend asked me who would the who is going to be the next coach of the Indiana Fever, mm. and one name popped up in my head: okay. Lisa Bluter. Really? Mm. Well, I heard a different name. Okay, and the name is that. And it, uh, I'm having a little trouble hearing you, so you might say um, that it would be Stephanie White. Mm. Okay. Okay. Who just, who just uh, connected. Uh, Connecticut uh, parted ways with her. Uh, Stephanie White has been in uh has has been with the uh indiana fever she's very good friends with lynn dunn who just came in uh as uh as the um senior advisor she was the general manager no longer uh that's amber cox you remember mm -hmm. yes and we talked about that and um there uh the rumor mill is highly Highly, highly um, favorable to this matchup because one of the reasons for seven changing coaches, that's more than half the league uh, in the WNBA, mm -hmm. this is about money, championships, yes. return on investment. Okay? Mm -hmm. With the new money 
by the with the new media deal this is an issue for all of the league yeah. and and so uh the thing is that if you post a losing record which um uh stephanie white did not 62 and 32 over two seasons mm -hmm. uh 2023 coach of the year with connecticut seven and seven on the postseason the only thing that she hasn't been able to do as a head coach is bring a, a championship to yeah. the teams that she's played however um they are um they are very high on stephanie and, and lynn dunn in particular amber cox um mm -hmm. they're you know and you'll remember that coaching change from yes, the season and um management change i should say and mm -hmm. the thing is that um that makes the most sense i would yeah. i would i would say it makes a lot more sense than your choice brian if i am i do not mean to disrespect no that's fine it yeah. was it was just a, it was just the first name that popped in my head i didn't think of uh stephanie white so you're right that's a that's a big connection should they should they make that hire what do you think yeah. the first, if they hire stephanie white if she does turn out to be the woman to coach the indiana fever what do you think is the first thing that she'll do or try to establish Oh, I think she's going to um, start building the team uh, uh, with um, with the players. I mean, I think that Caitlin Clark is going to be an even bigger superstar mm -hmm. with her. I mm -hmm. think. I, I think that you are going to see a much more consistent style of play. I yeah. think it's going to be, um, I, I think that she's going to bring those same qualities that, um, that, uh, you know, she brought to the Connecticut son who right. had had a lot of trouble in the years between um, uh, Mike Tebow being there and, uh, and now. And so I think that um, I, my prayer is that she will re-sign Kelsey Mitchell. That yeah. I cannot say that that's true, but, mm -hmm. I, but I can say that I do believe that for consistency's sake, for the abilities that she showed, I do believe that that would be the first thing that they should do is re-sign yeah. Kelsey Mitchell. Yeah, Kelsey, Kelsey Mitchell is the key to this offseason for Indiana. You keep that backcourt together mm -hmm. and... You have a championship contender. You just don't have a playoff contender because the second half of the year, you saw everything come together for Kelsey Mitchell and Caitlin Clark. And something yeah. else we talked about after the Olympic, it took the Olympic break and it took, it, it took the Olympic break and it took them resting to get everyone together, Kelsey mm -hmm. Mitchell, Olivia Boston, Caitlin Clark. And now the second half of the year, they started seeing where Caitlin Clark was throwing the passes and they have been able to get into the lane and get and get to the basket. Second half of the year, the Indiana Fever averaged 92 points a game. Mm -hmm. And three of the last five of the season, three of which I called, they had 100 points. Yeah. So the potential is there. You bring Stephanie White into the picture and you get uh you you still get the scoring. You're still going to get the scoring, but you're also going to get the defensive philosophy as well. And that's something Allie, you've touched on so many times over in our conversations with the WNBA. Exactly, exactly. Um interestingly enough, with Christy Sides gone, something that had long been rumored and depending on how the Indiana fever had did last year, most people were calling for her head by the middle of the season. Yep. I'm, I'm going to just venture a guess that she might end up at the Chicago sky. I there's do, a chance. I do. Find there's it there's a chance. I do find it weird that after a relatively successful season, they're calling for her head though. I mean, Give well, they were calling for her head at the top of the season. Yeah. Okay. They were calling for her head when they started one and eight. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah. the reason they started one and eight was fatigue. Caitlin Clark was just plain tired. Yeah. And couldn't get into into sync with uh with the offense. Mm -hmm. She just couldn't get into sync with the offense. And she and also I think the the other thing you have to remember is that she was still a rookie and yep. and she was still in a, finding her way and trying to figure out her you know uh her uh, her offense i mean mm -hmm. and and still learning how to defend in this league because yeah. yep. it is it, it, it's a much got so much better second hand after the olympic break her mm -hmm. defense yeah. got so much better her timing got better there's still a lot for caitlin clark to learn we've said it on this show so very often right. there's mm -hmm. so much more for caitlin clark to learn especially Def especially defensively, but you saw Caitlin Clark get her hands in the passing lanes a lot the mm -hmm. second half of the year, and that was one point, Allie, and I love you for this, that you applauded about CC that she started getting her hands in the passing lanes a lot the second <laughs> half of the year. That's absolutely right, and um, she's coming into her own, and she needs the kind of coach that Stephanie White can be, and yeah. to be able to uh, to further develop that game of hers, and mm -hmm. and also, and most importantly, develop that confidence. Yeah. Uh, if you talk to Caitlin Clark, she is one of the most humble people. Mm -hmm. She in is. you know the bigger they are the nicer they are and True. She, i mean she just is candace, Par candace parker wandered over to our table you know as a bright-eyed senior at naperville central and sat with me and said how are you doing okay shanice yeah. jenkins a very very dear friend who i saw play at whitney young and no yep. one believed me except her family when I said one day she's going to be the player of the year in the Big East. 2016, mm -hmm. what happened? She was the player of the year in the Big East. Caitlin Clark is going to be that player that carries this league. You and might even carry us on out of here. You might Allison be. Moran, Mike Drop Moran at our service, as she always is, every <laughs> Tuesday morning. We love you, my dear. Thank you, you so, too. so much. For being here, thank you for everything, for your support of the show, and just just plain thank you. We love thank you. you. We love you, too, and have a great week. I'm going to say this. If Caitlin Clark keeps practicing about getting her hands in the passing lanes, we may see her do something that, again, not even LeBron has done. Lead the league in scoring and steals. and lead the league in steals. I'm I was so waiting. For, I'm so waiting for that to happen. I think it'll happen next year. We got a boogie. Have a great day. God bless. Remember to make your next move your best move. And always remember, if your dreams don't scare you, they're simply not big enough. Dream big, do bigger. Learn from us. We're doing it, and y'all should do it too. So long, everybody. <laughs>